my headphones. You hear it? Sweat Equity Podcast and Streaming Show. Pragmatic Entrepreneurial Advice with veiny dick jokes. I'm your host, Law Smith. <laughs> Sitting here with me is Eric Reginger. Our uh-huh. guest, Serena Faison. You're going to hear on that third mic. Hashtag girthy RI. Hashtag 69B2B. Hashtag Sweat Equity. Uh, you can listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcast app, Spotify, Laughable, which I think is still around. <laughs> We're on there. We're future on there. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, LinkedIn, Roku, IGTV. Isn't that right, Eric? Yeah, don't push that Roku too much, though. So. Okay, because it hasn't don't been updated. Don't like updated. Big All pain right. in the ass. We are sponsored by Grasshopper. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat is the way you get the hookup. Holler if you hear me. Uh-huh. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Gets you $50 off that business phone line. You need an extra business phone line that is not Google Voice. Don't be a jabroni. Don't have it go to your personal phone line. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. We'll give you the hookup for you. It gets the hookup on this show. FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the accounting software that you can invoice your clients in this digital new normal world. Go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat. Gets you $150 off your annual subscription. Go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat is the only way you can get that coupon and help out this show. That's 69 in B2B right there. And Warby Parker, warbyparkertrial.com forward slash sweat, like Keith Sweat, wearing some sweet prescription sunglasses, prescription eyewear. Don't get ripped off by big eyeglass where you pay $300 or you go to the Sunglass Hut. I don't know, is the Sunglass Hut even still a thing? No. I think it is. Malls aren't a thing anymore. Don't, malls are, are dead. All business is dead. Retail's dead. But Warby Parker is alive because they're a disruptor in the eyeglass game. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. I'm wearing mine if you're watching this on video. And I've got a stupid football shaped horse head, and they fit my head. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. We'll send you five pairs to try at home. You don't like them? Send them all back. Get five more. They can do it by face size. I think that is amazing. You ready to get this? Hotty toddy. God almighty, you ready to get this show started, Eric? Not like that, but okay. Yeah! Sweat equity. Sweat equity. Sweat sweat, sweat, sweat equity. Sweat equity. My sweat equity. One part I forgot. Have you have you sat through our ad read like that? No. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Yes. No, I have not. Wow. And you're so enthusiastic, which is great. And there's you're nothing ad- really written on here. It's, it's just blank. Yeah. Really? No. I, I, say, I have the URLs because I forget the URLs. But I was going to say your advertiser should be very, very happy because you're so passionate. Well, he's not normally that passionate. No. It's because he's got an audience. I know. There's three other people in the room. We've been doing this, uh, just Eric and I, in a weird um, snuff bunker the last couple of times. So it's been weird. Hey, that's my house. <laughs> um, or by Zoom. So it's it's exciting to see other people. How about that? It's exciting to see you. I miss uh, miss hanging out with you. I know. It's very it's very nice to be here. Thank you for having so, me. Serena Faze on Dot Media is the website. Uh, is, is yeah. he ever going to get like the name right? Did I do? Well, well, you said it weird. You yeah, said it odd. Exactly. Fuzz on? Yes. There you go. F- fuzz on? There you go. Have dude. I said it wrong the whole time? Dude. Probably. <laughs> you don't I, say my name right ever. Well, I do that on purpose. <laughs> so Once well, I messed it up the first time, then well, I... That's why, well, that's what Eric and I were thinking, like, maybe that you were doing it on purpose. Well, not for you. That for him, really yes. really loves you. For him, <laughs> I show love in different ways. <laughs> So, so five love languages, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm all five. I'm, okay, you're all I'm five. I'm needy. Okay. No, what are the five? What are the five love, love ones? You know ones? what? That's a good question. I'm not sure. There's, I've read the book uh, and I forgot. I know. I have the book. I haven't read the whole book. I downloaded but. the audio book and then <laughs> I'll get to one's it. One's like gifts. <laughs> one's like appreciation. Yeah. One's uh. That's all food. I know. Yeah. Food is one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if food's one. It, I think it is. I think that's in the like uh, service. I think. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, touch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yourself. <laughs> touch. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but Lord. You have to touch your partner. Yes. Uh, and then there's God. I I know. There. I think I'm uh, definitely. I was definitely like uh, whatever the neediness of like. Hey, thanks for doing that. I really? need to hear. I need to hear that. Yeah. Whatever that Tell is. Tell me about it. You, 
appreciation. <laughs> so you, hey, I appreciate you. both of you. We appreciate you. Yeah, too. see, that makes me feel good. Um, what's been going on? So I haven't seen you in a while. Eric's been working with you on some stuff. He's amazing. And uh, Amazing, yes. And we'll spell your name for people that want to know the website. S A R I N A F A Z A N dot media. Yeah, right? you did yes. it. Yay! See, I can't read out loud really well. That's why if I had a script here, I wouldn't be able to read it. And I almost fucking dicked that up really bad because <laughs> my head just jumps around. So I, can, I think that's why I do stand up in a way because I couldn't, I, I can never read out loud in class or whatever. And you're like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to divert and make a joke. You know, like... Pretend to read. Right. Yeah. I've always had problems with that, so I have to go super slow if I read anything. But uh, You did it. I did Congratulations. it. Congratulations. You did it. What, so what's been going on? I see, I see a new brand. I see a new website. Making moves. Yes. Didn't Eric do a great job on the website? Yeah. This is why we have you on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Promote very it. Much. <laughs> Promote it. Um, and then I saw a new... Uh, Artwork for the uh, podcast Trailblazer. Yes. On see, I'm I'm doing your plug That's for you. <laughs> you are no, please. Uh, on on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, everything. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. How's that going? It's going great. What guests have you had on recently? It's going great. So we've actually been doing a lot of great projects. And um, what do you think of the office here at Sky Strategic Marketing? Tanya and the team here See, are She's awesome. so nice. She's diverted already. She no, couldn't even plug your own stuff. No, yeah. I, we'll talk about that. Well, what are, what, all right. Yes, we're doing this in Sky Strategic Marketing uh, in PR's office. Sky Strategic's office, I should say. Isn't the office so neat, though, in this building? Yeah. I remember as a television reporter, though, my I asked um, my former chief photographer um, at work, he said, don't you remember we used to do stories here at this building? Because this building is such a great building. Yeah, so it's, it's an old cigar factory. Yes. There were ghost stories, were they? Yes. This place might be haunted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that old. It's got like 14 staircases in here to get around. Yeah. Which it's I a find, labyrinth. Yeah, yes. which it, it, it definitely feels hodgepodgey the way it's probably been kept up in the last 150 years it's been around probably. Yeah. Um, hey. And there's like, I'm walking up here, the MC St Escher staircase, and it's like, w there's a ballerina fashionista business in here. There's oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. all sorts of cool. There's a bunch of businesses that you aren't sure are businesses. You're like, uh, does this guy live in here? Or is this, what's going on in here? So, it'll be so neat to see. It's very yeah. eccentric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In eclectic, a good way. Eclectic. Yeah. Eclectic. Yeah. yeah. I would use it, right? Eclectic. Yes. Yeah. Similar to our place in Ebor, like you know. Right, I loved your offices in Ebor. Your offices in Ebor were so yeah. Neat this is as we well were only eclectic. we weren't going to settle for anything less eclectic. Than yeah. That. Yes, there we go. I want we want to be around it. weird. Yes. yes, there we go. We don't. There we go. We're weird enough, but by comparison, we look like a bunch of uh, what do they call it? Normies, normcore, as the kids call it. Compared to the real weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't know about normcore? Where I've kids, heard that before. Kids go out. Uh, have you heard of that? No, I have not. So they're talking that. about the guy from Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, it's where the, the the kids these days they go out. They're they're dressing so oddly now that if you're the person that goes out dressed in like khakis mm -hmm. and a button down shirt, you're you're being the oddball. You're being the the most odd out of all of them because mm -hmm. you're going normcore. Normcore. Yeah, wow. that just sounds like the f old school frat boy with the uh, the fish belt yeah. and the dockers. Oh yeah, that's every That's guy not went to college normcore. I, yeah. yeah, see, I rejected that. that I, no, it's a thing for sure. It's just not. It's Although I am wearing khaki shorts today, but not. We're a dads. We're not, we're not even in this. We're thirty. We're in our mid thirties. So yeah, not that's even, true. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. Um, so what's? Uh, so it's been really neat. Actually. Yeah. Yes. So. What have you learned about uh, the quarantine, self-quarantine? Well, okay. Well, there's lots to talk about on that, right? Can we get so, you up in that mic? Oh, my. You know oh, yeah. Is. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Is this there. better? Okay. There is this go. so much better? Yeah. No. This has, been, this has been crazy, hasn't it? So what we've been doing is sharing your story, which is right now during the coronavirus crisis, of course, uh, there's a lot of stories we've been doing. Um, you know, we, we've talked to doctors. I just talked to a judge about... Um, the Michigan, the mission critical courtrooms that are still functioning. What's that? It's 
so interesting. Talk about law and order. They have to uphold law and order. So right now, there are mission critical courtrooms. That means in Hillsborough County, there's only a couple of courtrooms open where they have to conduct yep. hearings, mm -hmm. and very few people are allowed, you know, in and out. So I mean, everybody. It's like is Hannibal Lecter yeah. getting rolled in. I was going to say, what kind of uh, stuff are they doing? What's what has to be handled right away? I still have a couple of coordinates coming up, and they're going to do them tele. Uh, You're a special case, though. Yes. Well, one's one's family law, and then like they're like, we'll just do that uh, telecommunicate or whatever, and then mm -hmm. one's a, a a small claims that. I think I have to go in for it, honestly. Well, really? well some... Yeah. Or I'm uh, mixing the two. Maybe I have to do the opposite. Well, some, even if you have... So if you have, to, if you have to go into court, just like anywhere else, well, with lots of places, they're only allowing so many people in at the same time. Right. So it's very limited. Um, most of the hearings are through teleconference. Yep. Right now, and we're we're getting ready to post the story, but juries right now in the state of Florida, there probably will not be any jury trials until well past June. Huh. So, That's pretty crazy when yeah. you think about it. And then if you guys think about this, too, it's already hard enough when you get subpoenaed to be on a jury to get people, you know. You don't just throw it away? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you're civic duty, but just, but, but she no, just calls I never mayor. got it. <laughs> no. I never got it, man. Um, I don't have to go to this, right? You don't know. You but don't I know mean, if I got it or not. But don't you always just think in general, it's hard to get people even to go to jury duty. But now after they open sure. up, open it up to jury duty. Um, Let's face it. It's not the best people in society that are like fired up to go to jury duty. Yeah. It's gonna be, if you're not trying to find them, if you're not trying to make an excuse to get out of it, I, there's probably not a good time. You. Yeah, you probably got too much free time going on. Yes, yeah? it's it's like if you know, like maybe I should, maybe I should apply for that meso theme in the Oma case or whatever. Maybe, uh, yeah. maybe I should. Uh, those are very specific. Uh, maybe on the target demo for those uh, for those lawyers in the middle of the day going for class action lawsuits. Maybe I'm in that demo. It's uh, it's time to look in a mirror. But yeah, I. I'd say, yeah, it's hard to get anybody to do anything. It's gonna, yeah. It was hard to get people to go out just in general before, I would say, from doing just stand-up shows, I know that. And then now you're going to have this layer of like weirdness of everybody being OCD and having cooties. And well, I mean, honestly, I just had a guest on the podcast. Um, her name's Ellie Lamb, and she is... Is that who was here before? Yeah, yeah. she's an event planner, and she yeah. has a business called Social... Revelry, and we were talking about there's going to be two, I think, two segments, right, guys? Like one segment of the population, when, when things open again, they're going to be very gung-ho yeah. about going out, being around people. But then there's going to be another huge segment that they're not going to want to do anything because there will still be a lot of fear and, uh, you know, yeah. insecurity about the whole thing. It's hard, too, to, uh, to know what the best choice is if you want to be the person that start things back up again. It's like, man, I don't, it right. doesn't seem like it's a little early see, from what everything I've heard, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be weird for sure. People That's think they're tough. just going to turn it right back on. It's like, I don't know about all that. No way. I, I think right? as, as the death ratio versus the, the case ratio, it, I mean, excuse me, the number, the ratio gets wider between people dying and how many people have it as that spread gets bigger in a ratio people are going to just say fuck it we don't i don't care you uh, think? We, yeah if, if you're not dying as much because there's because part of the problem is it's uh, a lot of people can have it be asymptomatic i mm -hmm. think the thing that needs to happen is the testing needs to uh, we need to be able to get it like a pregnancy test and go be able to do it yeah they need right. to just mail them to everybody's Mailing address right to your home. Boom. Here because you go. If you, That's if a you, good idea. If you know, you know like, right? But then you'll you'll have the people that won't do it, won't do it just because they won't test themselves, and that they weren't going to do self quarantine anyway. So, hey, we just got to talk about jury duty. They can mail that letter to your house right. and say, hey, you're right. under arrest. That, so you that's how you, you should have to what? mail it Get in. Get the jury duty people. Yeah. No, but you know what? You're right. Like if if you can if you can if there are letters being mailed. For jury duty, right. I mean, it, there's a social there's a, contract. Yeah. It, well, there's a database <laughs> with all of our information, right? Yeah. So, so I don't yeah. know what kind of, I mean, chances are the testing would be uh, like a cheek swab or something. It would have to be pretty advanced, I think, there's to blood be tests. able to, 
that's even worse. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, people yeah. aren't going to want to give their blood. As a thing. So I say just mail it, you know, but there's got to be something that they can do mass numbers of testing before it really is going to make everybody feel good. It won't be, I don't think it would be administered by the government. I just think it would be, it would be something that w they might make it as cheap as possible for everybody to get it. You know, like someone's, I guarantee there's a race to figure this out right now. How do we, how do we mass produce this test to check your antibodies and stuff? And, you know, or make it available to someone like CVS Walgreens that is, I think there's a CVS within like every mile, like square mile. Of it seems States like or something it. crazy. Yeah. And then Walgreens like strategy, all they do is they literally will open up across from a CVS. Wherever they yeah. Go. I know. Did you know that? Yeah. And then you, the people buy more out of a Walgreens the way they set up the aisles. They do? Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it, you learn something new every day. I, I had no idea. I, I'm a dork for like consumer behavior, like uh, fun facts like that. So uh, you go to the grocery store, all the end caps or the way they set those up. It's all, it's all really strategic. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Walgreens is much more appealing to the eye when you walk in than a CVS. When you were with Snap-on, wasn't that part of it when you were looking at aisles and like placement and stuff? Well, I mean, in a Snap-on truck, there's only one aisle. It's, oh, oh. So but, like, but 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 you the company, placement. I well, I mean, the placement of you know products within the truck itself definitely matters. You know. Yeah, and so where your eye eye level is, it's it's fun to if you catch yourself trying to notice it, like, okay, well, you're gonna look where the little stickers are at because they're trying to get your attention, right? So that's strategically done from from corporate through the grocery store or or uh, whatever retail store it is usually. And then if you're in like a, a Walmart grocery store or one of the big box ones, check where your eye level's at. Because the eye level for guys is going to be like the one rung higher right, right. than the, the female category they're trying to get. And so, and then also the cheapest stuff is usually really far down or really uh, high up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. cereal that comes in the bags mm -hmm. yep yep yeah that's really interesting so you think you're getting a deal because you're seeing the this one's the deal right here but if you look down sometimes you can find a deal better that way yeah, it's well, the same look, way they have candy bars at the checkout counters you know, yeah impulse stuff. buy they yeah. know what they're doing yeah but i think that's uh, that's interesting right because mm -hmm. it's all playing to human behavior and impulse and then trial and error that is very interesting yeah so speaking of like grocery stores and cbs's and walgreens and walmart's and all that are you guys going to the grocery store or do you feel hesitant about going to the grocery store i am not, i do not hesitate to send my wife to the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> she said she was gonna go today so we'll see i am temporarily moved in with my baby mama technically still my wife and she's been handling that so uh, I'm not scared to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. I, some people are. I'm not either. I'm you know, not, I'm not either. Yeah. Some people are. And, you know, I just try, I, I try to be very cognizant of how everybody feels about it. And there's a lot of strong opinions. Right. A lot of strong opinions out there. Um, Plus, you're like local celebrity, so you've no, got to be on your I, best behavior. Well, thank you. That's very sweet. If of people say, ever but... recognize me, they're like, I saw you <laughs> fart on stage at Side yeah. Splitters Comedy Club. I'm like, you got a guy with the oh, colonoscopy, yeah. right? <laughs> you guys, you got That's that you. bit about your ball hair, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, this is my mom. Uh, she's shopping with me. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the other thing that that's the thing that's really weird is like I can't see my parents, and we're trying to right, and they want to drive by and see me with the kids. I'm doing PE with the kids. Every day, so I try to have a structured schedule if I can. Well, you know, I mean, I, it's not your that, job. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's okay. long drop. That is hard, like with wrong button. With the parents, right? Like I do think, I mean, there's certain um, people that I do feel really should be protected. Yeah. And with, I have a lot of friends too who have, who the parents live here, and they can't see the the kids or the grandkids. Yep. Yeah, and that's I mean, and that's, my parents and that's have like tough. driven around the park we're at, and then wow. drop off cookies like it's a bomb. Oh, oh my, really? Yeah, dead oh. drop. Yeah, dead drop. And your parents live. <laughs> my parents super live close. in our neighborhood, right? So they they're lucky, you know, they get to see the kids every day still, but they're not going anywhere. I mean, right? You know, we it's keep just, inside our little our little group. It's so strange, isn't it? It's like we we're living in the twilight zone or something. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, I, you know, I'm honestly surprised at many people that followed the protocol. You were, yeah, yeah, because I mean, I don't know. It maybe for own self interest. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting 
Look, I was listening to someone talk about this just means we're a part of history because almost every generation in history had something like this. Yes. Um, and we've just been really fortunate that we haven't. There was something in 68, uh, 1968, but it wasn't this bad. And then like every generation, especially you get, you get uh, earlier than 1900, it's like, oh, this was just commonplace. Like you would lose, you could just lose a whole village. Yeah, you get sick and you die. Mm-hmm. Right. Doesn't it matter what it is. What went virus. through the town, yeah. Whatever the and you know, fix that's, is. That's so interesting, though, that you guys mentioned that because Sammy and I, you know, my 12-year-old, mm-hmm. she and I were, were taking the walk, and she was the one that brought it up. And she said, and it's so true, like when she's a parent or when she's older, her children are going to be reading about this in history books. Right. It's so, I mean. You'll be a grandma. Yeah. Reading it to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, grandma. It's crazy. <laughs> That'll happen before you know it. Hopefully, I mean, it's just, it's, give you she's time. twelve. Let's let's give yeah. her some time. Just yes, please, yes. Um, no, but it's a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting history. that she thought of that. Yeah, I, I didn't think of that like that. You know. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a big she picture seemed, kind of girl. She seems very adult <laughs> for twelve. She's an old soul. For I was sure. like, could I put this lizard on a bottle <laughs> rocket and send him yeah. to the moon? See, we put the bottle rockets in the, the side of our bikes. Oh. So we put, pulled the handles off so there's a hole in the side and use it to aim, if that makes sense. I'll do one better. We used to get PVC pipes, cork the bottom of them, mm-hmm. and then put them like rocket launchers, <laughs> and everybody wore sunglasses so we were protecting Oh, you want to be eyes. safe, yes. Yeah. Hey, speaking of glasses, yep. I have to mention this, so when you were doing... Your advertising, yep. and you Warby were talking Parker. about Warby Parker. Okay, so you know, like wear my dollar store glasses. I wear dollar store glasses all the time. I have every single color with an animal print. Usually. Well, with an animal print, some type of print or whatever. But my speaking of Sammy, she loves Warby Parker. They've done so a good job. She is like, mommy, please, and yes, I will say, mommy, and she'll she'll be horrified that I said I can't believe that you. You said that I call you mommy. I don't call you mommy anymore. I call you mamo. You know, like, you know, mamo? Like, yeah, mamo. Okay, well, whatever, mommy to me. But she has begged me, begged me to get Warby Parker glasses. Really? Yes, she loves they've Warby done, Parker glasses. They've done a good job being uh, not only a disruptor, but they went uh, they went online to offline uh, retail. So they went they very were, rare. Yeah, mm. they they did basically what Apple did. Uh, Apple didn't want to open stores, and then they just did it. Just I think more for the uh, customer service part of it, to keep, you know, have the Genius Bar and stuff. Right, right. And then the stores became massively popular, uh, like way more than they expected. They thought it would just kind of keep people, keep them as lifelong customers, kind of thing, mm-hmm. so that you had a place to go to get to get service, and then maybe buy. And then it just became, oh, they bought more. Warby Parker kind of did the same strategy, where they're like, we're gonna post up. In other existing businesses that are a little bit more eclectic, a little bit different. So here we have them at Oxford, Oxford Exchange, yeah. which is like a hodgepodge. It's you know, it's like a. It's a collective. Yeah, it's yeah. like um, an expensive Cracker Barrel because <laughs> you go right out of the restaurant yes. into like this really expensive knickknack <laughs> store that I don't know anybody that would buy from it. But right. Um, but then in the bookstore, they, they section out apart for Warby Parker. Mm-hmm. I just, I like the story. I heard them on, um, uh, what's the Guy Raz podcast, um, where he interviews businesses. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, still going to try th- Something no. you should know. No. Damn it. Um, uh, doesn't matter. But I like their story because it was four Northwestern kids that just were like, why are eyeglass wear? Why, why is it three, 300 to like, my dad's are nine hundred dollars, and I wow. fucking well, I, you're ripped kidding. him a new one. Yeah, nine hundred dollars. And I was like, I thought you hate listening to our podcast. We have an advertiser. Wow. <laughs> He's like, I wow. know, you're, I know. And they look like the Mad Men ones. They're like the tortoise kind of looking, and I'm like, they have those. Those are like wow. the in now. Wow. And he goes, I know, and I go, yeah, you got jobbed by someone. I think he went old school. He goes to like an old man's. Eyeglass wear. Glassery. Yeah, he won't buy like suits or anything. Or anything like that. Well, your Warby Parker glasses, I, those are yep. your Warby Parker glasses. Yeah. Yes, they look very, very nice. Thank they're you. They're not yes. real. They're fake. They're, <laughs> they're, they're real. He's always talking These about how lenses. great his vision is. <laughs> I'm 20, 21, I have 20, 15 in the other. I wear them because it helps me, uh, it strengthens my eyes while I drive. Oh. But I wear them because I'm a team player. Oh. Where are yours, Eric? I'm sorry. Uh, Where'd you get one? 
You can, do, you, do you also have a pair? Not a Warby, Warby Parker. Parker. No. And he has sunglasses that are prescription. And he wears them like Ray Charles inside sometimes. It's because I want you to think I'm sleeping and you won't talk to me. <laughs> well, why don't you just draw <laughs> eyes on your eyelids? I made the like pink. I cut the ping pong ball in half and then taped them on there, but dog ate it. So, what else? Uh, what else have we learned? And by we, I mean you, because uh, I don't. I don't know. I feel like I'm going starting to go cuckoo now. Seeing people and whatnot. No, you know, it's. I mean, it's really, really hard. Like a friend of mine sent me a um, a little saying that I I posted, and it, it talked about how for a hugger, the struggle the struggle oh, is you're real. You're a hugger, yeah. I am such a hugger, yeah. And so now you have to be so cognizant, you know. You're not, not a hugging. side hug. You're a real hug. I'm a real hug. A genuine two handed yes. on the back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A real hug. Right. And now, I mean, I'm telling you, folks, the struggle is real, guys. <laughs> it is. Hard. Cut to Serena just hugging pillows. Back to the love languages. Oh if you're a, a yeah. touch person, you're in trouble right now. No, I think it's really, really hard. And speaking about the um, being alone and isolating and things like that, I, you know, just talking to my friends via Zoom or on the phone. I'm sorry, Zoom's they, not doing it. It's not doing enough for me. Well, <laughs> trying know, to do that with friends, I'm just like, mm. people are just going nuts, though. You know, I mean, I mean, it, it's there's only so many Zoom calls you yeah. can make, and there's only you know. People, it's. I mean, I know it's. I know it's really taking, really taking its toll. So, words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch. Those, okay. are, those are the five. I think I'm. I, I gosh, I mean, I'm just in love I, with love. I don't, <laughs> I don't care about gifts. Serena's is gonna claim all five. <laughs> I'm just a lover. I am. I've set up seven couples that have gotten married. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, remember? Yeah, well, I think we good. Ta- I think yeah, we you know, about you beat, you, I thought I was impressive. I got two, and I was like, look at me. Right. Yeah. What uh, two? I've, I've mar- I, mar- I actually married one of them. Like, you I, actually married somebody? Yeah. Because <laughs> I, mar- I put them together, yeah. And they're like, you're going to tell, really, yeah, tell jokes? And I was like, nope. Okay, that's really cool. So, okay. So I, don't you, wanna, I don't want you all to not be married if I, didn't, if I do this wrong. So, did you get um, a certificate? Ordained? Yeah, ordained. I'm I, sorry. Uh, I should know that word. Uh, ordained. Uh, on Universal Life Church. <laughs> so, if anybody needs to do it, it's $8 online. You can literally do it the night before like I did. Offer code slash sweat. <laughs> yeah. Tell them you heard it on this podcast if they have that little form. Do it for $4. <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah. It's just that uh, the, they're married seven, five years ago. Five years oh, ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Divorced three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend Brendan married me. He did the same thing. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Got ordained. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's for eight bucks. You'd be fine at it. Hey, listen. If anybody asked me to conduct the ceremony, are yeah. you kidding? I'd probably start crying. I'd be so excited. Yeah. I mean. Do you even actually have to be ordained, or can yeah, you, you just be? You, you, you can't just be a witness and on the like, paper. I had to like sign something. I have to uh, give them a proof of that I'm ordained. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke, but yeah. you still have to have something. Yeah, that's where it's at, man. Yeah. Get that quickie way of the ceremony. Five minutes tops. Yeah, nobody I, I wants it longer than that. that. And this, the one I did was outside. And I was like, it's in January here, so it was like, it was okay. Weather's still kind of cold. To sit outside for very long, so I was like, "I'm not adding any flavor to this. No. This is going as quick as it can, so everybody can get inside." Right. Yeah. And drink and party. That's what they want to do. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Such coming from a male's perspective. I mean, I don't think women want it longer than five minutes. But listen, I know with you guys, Wayne five Bam, minutes. Thank only. you, ma'am. <laughs> That's why we, women call me quick. Like, we, women we, have always called me quick. So. Know, we, women always. And want I always like, apologize. You know, <laughs> Sorry, you're so hot. Sorry. <laughs> You're just so hot. Sorry. We want some of that emotion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. It was still there. Just in a spe- <laughs> sped the up. speeches afterwards, the walk down the aisle, you can cry then. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Go cry oh in your God. room. Isn't it going to be great, though, when we can finally start going to weddings? Speaking of just trying to get back to normal. I mean, Again, Eric and I are like, <laughs> depends. If, okay, if going, we got to, if we have to. Setting. Going to events. Let's yeah. just talk about, like, for me, yes, I love going to a wedding, but just just in general, like going to an event, going out to dinner, taking your kids to a movie. Look, I mean, I don't, just, you're going to take my kids to the movie? <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> Please. I think that's why I'm going nuts. It, honestly, it's not that different. I, I didn't realize how much of an indoor cat I actually am, but I do like being around people. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't need, I, I like that it's, a, it, it's happening. I think what I was telling Eric on a previous episode was that I just don't like that I can't go do it. Right. Yeah. Like, 
I can't go to the gym. I don't need to be around him. I don't need to go to the gym, really. I just don't like being told you can't do it. It's yeah. hard, though. I mean, it definitely is hard knowing that, we, you know, you, we can't do things. And, you know, it, to your point, though, earlier when you said that you were surprised that so many people were actually following the rules and yeah. regulations, I, it was nice to see, actually. It, it was true. Like, it was, um, it was surprising to me as well at how so many people – just started to follow all those rules and regulations without a lot of prodding at all. They just did the, it. The best comparison I can make is when there's when you when you think uh, everybody's kind of just we're being as shitty as possible as just humans in society. I always look to when there's a fire truck or an ambulance, people still get out of the way. I was going to yeah. say just right. traffic in general. The yeah. fact that there's not 40 people mm-hmm. dying on the roads every day, if you think about it, well, it's they, really they, quite amazing. There's 40 people. It's well, I a lot mean, more like, that, in your little yeah. time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's not a million people dying on like, because mm-hmm. they're driving around in these giant metal missiles and everybody follows the rules so that we all don't die. It's the same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But the thing, when there's an emergency van and people fire, get out of the sure. way, people, people get, get out of the way, they know they're not going to get arrested if they didn't. And you could easily just, you know, drift follow behind one of those. Yeah. But it, it's the thing that people still, they don't hit each other in traffic normally. Right. And then when there is a call to action to move, they do. So it is strange. I just don't, there's still always like 10% of people that don't do anything when a fire truck or, in, or yeah. emergency vehicle is going. So I don't know. I'm surprised because, uh, but I, I've, I was predicting on this show we're not going to do well once we find out more information and people are going to be like, I, cause I'm in that zone right now where I'm like, okay, I think we're going to be all right. And, uh, it's time to go back to work. I'm in mm-hmm. that kind of headspace, And I feel like a lot of Americans are now too. Yeah. Well, we gave it two weeks. Well, once you know, <laughs> it's like everybody's antsy. I don't know. I've been, I, it's been six, I think for I me. I don't even know. Yeah. So, I, I know because I haven't been at my own place. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, yeah. uh, and I'm watching longer. my kids, mm-hmm. uh, the majority of like the that's normal, the hard part, the man. normal day. That is. That's the hard thing it's is waking so hard. up and being like, oh, you're still here. <laughs> oh, quiet time. And we can't just <laughs> try to put kids somewhere. down for quiet time. I didn't know how hard that shit is. <laughs> <laughs> Talk quiet time. What are you talking I can't about? call it nap time because they will freak out. So I had to rebrand it as oh, that's quiet so, time. Oh, well, that's so cute. Though, <laughs> so that I you go, rebranded it. So I go. You don't have to take a nap, but you're going to have to be quiet and stand still and don't fall asleep. Oh, my gosh. That's so cute, I have to though. trick him into him. Look at that. You, I have even, to lay, re, even, even rebranding nap I, time. Look I had to lay down with him to do it. Uh, experiential marketing. It sucks. <laughs> I have to lay down like, oh, well, I'm going to go to sleep. And then I fall asleep on the ground sometimes. I'll wake <laughs> yeah. up. My arms, my arms dead. The shoulders, you know. Rebrand successful. Yeah. That's why I didn't get here at... Uh, whatever, 3.45 when I thought it was. Um, you were napping? I fell asleep trying to get them asleep. Right. No. Because it's like, oh man, now I have to meditate? I can't do this. Well, speaking of kids, I am doing um, a piece on children and their views of oh, the virus. Interesting. And I started interviewing a couple of kids. And I have to say, I mean... Your daughter gives the most poignant... No, opinion. she actually, it's, well, it, it's funny, <laughs> she does not like to be on camera, on video, anything at all. And it's, so I said to her, I said, you know, I if you don't want to, you don't have to. Don't feel like you have to do it because she'll produce. it's me. Oh my gosh, she hates it. She hates it. Any of it? She, all of it. Like her friends, any, all of her friends are like, oh, I'll be interviewed or all, you, you know. Because you're around it, she's around it so much? You or? know, I think that. I think part of it is that she's around it so much. Two, she's more introverted, and well, and, I th- and she's done a lot, but she feels like she's ha- she has had to do it because of my job. Mm. You know, like we did this mother daughter shoot prior to all this stuff. The um, it's a it's a national shoot. It hasn't aired yet because of everything you know that's happening. But the shoot was about. Um, Mothers that work all the time with crazy hours uh-huh. and how their kids are adapting. And so I said to the producer, I'm like, do you think maybe I can use one of her friends you know, to, to like step in? <laughs> and they're like, no, you have you to use You want to pretend to be my daughter? You, you have to use, you know, 
You have to use your real daughter. So I said to Sammy. Otherwise, we have to put something at the bottom. Not real daughter. Not real daughter. I said, Sammy, I will. Because, you know. Bribe her. You just bribe her. Yeah. Yeah. She was really sweet. To explain it a little bit better, they wanted, like, real moms and their kids, not just. Because sometimes if um, I get asked to Sammy, you ever had a real margarita? (laughs) (laughs) It'll help. You're going to have them one day. Well, she said she did agreed to do it. I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. And she said, no, it's your job. And, you know, I'll do it. And so when they, the producers interviewed her, I have to say, I was so surprised <laughs> at, how well awesome. she, at how well she did. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's osmosis, it probably. Oh, my gosh. It was really, it was really sweet. Like, you know, like. Where's uh, my eye line? Where are my, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was really sweet. I was like, "Wow!" So, what's what? What is the uh, campaign you're doing to get kids' point of view on this? Yeah. So, you know, you know, I I told you guys I just did the one on um, mission critical courtrooms that has not aired yet. Okay. It will be airing, but who knows by the time? So you're, you're start, podcast, Yeah, you're kind of start piling. Like, check it a out. Lot of content mm-hmm. sounds mm-hmm. like. Gee, she's a journalist. <laughs> Got to keep it coming. I know. Yeah. Stay up to date. Love sharing your story. Love. I've, sharing I've your seen story. the four Emmys at her place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll brag for her because she won't brag about them. So we'll brag. Yeah, that's we'll, true. We'll brag for you. I know. Well, you guys are so, sweet. so you're getting kids. Is it like kids say the darndest things about quarantine? <laughs> no, you know it's very. And so the whole thing, the whole thing started. Bimbity, bimbity. <laughs> Sorry. Well, talking to Sammy when she mentioned about she's going to be teaching. You know, when she's an adult, her kids will be learning about this. Right. So I thought I said, gosh, wouldn't it be interesting to see kids' reaction? So, um, there was one little boy that very athletic, plays sports all the time, and he said the thing that he misses the most is passing the football with his dad. I mean, they still do it, right? I was like, why no, can't he they do still it? do it? With his friends. Like, it's uh, just him and his dad, uh, which is great. Uh, so, he, so not, you know, like, he's so proud of his dad. His dad's arm isn't very good. Like, he, he, he's so proud of his dad. He loves spending time with his dad. And his favorite thing to do was, like, have, like, a few of his friends around and play ball with his dad. Well, yeah. now his dad, he loves being able to play with his dad. Right. But now it's like, okay, it's just me and my dad, which is great. But he misses his friends. Right. Yeah. Oh, he, I have my five-year-old, Rocco, yeah. saying, I, I miss school. Oh. I was like, Whoa. what are you talking about? What are you about? doing at home? Whoa. Right. You know it's Dude, really... he's just sick of... Everybody's sick of each other. It's like, uh, just... He knew he wants to hang out with his buddies, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I never thought he would be the one to be like, oh, man. I'm missing school. You yeah. Know, you know that they really, they're really bored when, when they're missing school. Oh, yeah. School. Yeah. 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 Uh, we had a dog die in the last couple of weeks, oh, so I'm sorry. we're getting asked. I'm to... not laughing at the dog. I'm sorry, but you just <laughs> really like, brought it. Like, we're, getting, we're getting asked that hey, a lot. Uh, your it's son's just really like, sad. Uh, it's just about like, my dog. I'm like, I wish you're in school right now, in this moment, right now, asking me about. Yeah, Punky's with the new home. Punky oh with yeah, the new home. And you're like, you have to traipse the body through. But the house. no, my daughter repeats everything. Like she has good recall. It's just she's like, Punky's in a new home, and oh. you're like. What? Yeah, we already did this. I thought oh. it's not done. We're not done. Bless her heart. <laughs> Let yeah. it go. Uh, and then you know, it, yeah, getting cabin fever. So it's just like, it's yeah, it's tough on that. But what? Um, what? Because we're needing to wrap this episode up. But what? What's coming up other than uh, the children's POV and the the courts and all that stuff. Anything else? That well, I just did something. Um, it was on um, Big Storm Brewing Company. Yeah, I like them. You do, so they're in Clearwater and yep. Precision Garage Door. I'm a fat boy beer drinker. <laughs> That's how I roll. It was pretty cool, though. The, the two companies, they, they came together. They do great marketing. And, yeah, and and they um, mm-hmm. made sanitizer. And they're delivering yeah. sanitizer. Yeah, they're delivering I did see sanitizer. That. So I did a little piece for them and and that's coming up. I did, I mean, on a very serious note, I did a lot of work with um, One Blood because there was a critical need for blood. Yeah. Blood supply. Because everything was closed. Like the schools were closed, the rallies are, you know, are shut down. Catering by the family, who's amazing, there were no blood drives. Right. So catering by the family, um, locally here held a drive yeah but thankfully i mean more and more people are donating donating they're you know signing up and going to the donation centers and the big red buses are still out there mm-hmm. you just have 
to find them. But to get that message out, when yeah. we when it was the first time in history that it was that low. Really? So, yeah. Wow. So that was, you know. I don't even know my own blood type. I don't either. You know, it's in, really? it's interesting. I always forget. I don't know either. And so Sammy, he's speaking oh. a little Sammy, asked oh. me that today. Oh. She said, do you know AB? your blood type? And she said, I said, you know, I really don't. And she said, don't you think you should know your blood type, especially since you're doing these stories for one <laughs> Oh She's God. a good you know producer. What? Yeah. You know what? Just enough with the smartness. <laughs> well, I think Old that's what you're... I really think that's what you're getting out of the children's point of view, really, when you're asking him that. Hey, let me ask a human that isn't really dealing with all the adult anxiety that's getting right. in the way of clearing your head to mm-hmm. think about these things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because it's very A to B. Right. What, especially with a, a little boy, he's like, what do you miss? It's like, well... Uh, I only have five things going on in a day. Mm-hmm. So right. It's like one of them is one, gone. One of them, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and then he's probably trying to like I my head immediately went to well why can't y'all just get like pretty far away get some receiver gloves and throw the football and I'm surprised you haven't tried that you know kind of thing but I I know there's like a workout class my older sister's still doing and they're all you know in their own like cubicle in the field and stuff right. doing it so right. yeah it's out there. But uh, I, guess. Uh, I had I definitely we could uh, talk more, but we try to keep these, you know, yeah, under under an hour at least. But uh, uh, Serena Fazan, is that <laughs> do it right? He's getting much better. <laughs> yes, that dot was media. media dot yeah. media or dot TV, but or not dot com. Yeah. How do we lose that one? SerenaFazanMedia well, dot com. Yeah. That mm-hmm. one's also out there. Mm-hmm. SerenaFazan. How'd you lose your dot com, girl? Well, they're all out there, you okay. know. But the one that we, the one that we use the most, right? We're saying is that, that one because it's some guy it's a stopped, media company. Someone bought it. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we're just trying to keep it, you know, business like. Yeah. You guys yes. want me to move on from that? Okay, I get it. Fine. <laughs> well, we can talk about the domains all you want. It's just not that interesting. Hey, what domain uh, registrar you guys use? Yeah. GoDaddy? Uh, no. <laughs> that I guess that'll that'll do it. Uh, Serena Fazan. <laughs> dot me dot. Uh, and then. All the social media stuff. That's where I, I sell the blood drive stuff online mm-hmm. when you're pushing it out there. Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Serena Faison News is usually her yeah. handles for the various social media. There you, you go. Know, check it out there. All right. That's All right. been episode 242. Ooh. Wow. How about my sweat yeah. equity? Sweat equity pod. It's a girthy com. catalog. Sweat equity. Woo. Woo. Sweat, 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 sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, my sweat Woo. equity. What about my sweat equity?